Yes, please. Go ahead. Okay. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Depending upon where you are, I'm very happy to meet all of you and to open this uh, International Youth Rainwater Network. So I have a co-host with me. She's uh, another Professor Han. So she will say something from now. Welcome to the session on the International Youth Rainwater Network. I am Yoon Sun Han from Seoul National University. I will be the moderator for this session. Thank you all for your contribution in today's seminar. There has been efforts from all parts of the world to utilize rainwater in our daily lives. And today, this session will introduce cases from South Korea, Japan, Sri Lanka, and Vietnam. We will hear the voices from the academia, nonprofit organizations, cultural organizations, and student activity groups to learn about the ways in which children and adolescents can actively participate in rainwater management. Please feel free to ask questions by raising your hand, and we will spend some time after each presentation to answer these questions. And also, after all six presentations have ended, we'll also have some time to answer your questions if you have any. Thank you. So I would like to introduce the first presenter. Uh, the first presenter is Professor Mu Young Han from Seoul National University. Professor Han, the floor is yours. Okay, so, welcome again, I'm here. Uh, thank you for introducing me. Uh, my name is Mu Young Han, also known as Dr. Rainwater. I'm a professor at Seoul National University, and also I'm a chairman of IWA Rainwater Harvesting and Management Special Group. The title of my, my, uh, my presentation is The Need for International Youth Rainwater Network. So there are four words. So I'm going to talk each word. First, rainwater. So why rainwater? Okay, we are facing climate crisis all over the world. The drought, flooding, water shortage, and sinkhole. So recently in Europe and USA and everywhere there is flooding problem. It's a water problem. That is due to climate change. And also there are also challenges in fire. Sometimes you heat waves and wildfire. I heard that uh, still there's a wildfire going on in USA. So we are facing this kind of water and fire problem. So how to solve this climate crisis? So we have to think how. So let's think. And <clears throat> the problem is rainwater, drought, flooding, and water shortage. We can solve with or mitigate that challenges by proper rainwater management and also the fire program like mountain fire or heat waves that can be ma managed by uh, rainwater management. So that's why I ask, I'm talking about rainwater. Second thing is why use, why young people? There's a fam famous book here by Robert Fulgham, all I really need to know, I learned in kindergarten. So that means when we teach so the young, young, when they are very young, you can, it can be very effective, but they do not have this kind of a topic right now. So, so we have to teach how to, how to survive in water crisis. So that's, and that's the reason why I talk about youth. And also another reason is that they will be the leading actors of the earth for tomorrow. And also they can learn everything at the very, very early age and they have a very friendly mind and they can get together to make a, a peaceful world. So that's the reason why I use, uh, I'm, I'm concentrating on youth. For example, when I talk with my daughter, uh, the grand, granddaughter, when she talks something, the parents and grand, grandparents are very pay, pay attention to her. And, and 
according to her, we can change it, the, the adult people can change their mind. And next is why international? Okay, international. So water challenge is very site specific. So it's a solution and wisdom. This is a graph showing the months, x-axis x -axis months, and y-axis is rainfall. In Korea, we have a heavy rainfall during the summer time and very low rainfall in summer, uh, in winter and spring time. So we are experiencing flooding and drought at the same year. But some other countries like Europe, they have even, even equal distribution of rainfall. They have always, always have a similar rainfall. So when you review the uh, middle school statistics, we have this kind of parameters. One is annual rainfall. So for the total rainfall that falls in one year, and also the variance. So how 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 dif how is the difference of each each month? For example, Korea has a very high variance number, and Europe has very low variance number. And if you look at if you use this parameter for each country in the world, so that means annual rainfall and variance. We can locate each country. For example, x axis is rainfall, y axis y axis is variance. And for example, in Korea, we have this. So we have a very heavy rainfall and heavy barriers. We are experiencing flooding and drought. And there are some countries with low rainfall and low variance, and then uh, low rainfall and high variance, and, and high rainfall and low variance, and high rainfall and high variance. So the situation of the different countries is all different. So, but they have survived and they make some kind of a, a tradition and culture to survive that area. So it is very important to exchange the ideas. Uh, because of recent climate crisis, some country has this kind of distribution. For some, some countries have more rain, uh, less rain, or more, more distribution, more, 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 more the dif difference. So climate change, for one country, when they have this kind of climate change, they do not know how to solve it, but the other country may know it. So that's the reason we have to know and learn each other. Each other. So <clears throat> I'm saying each country has its own culture for climate mitigation and adaptation in their history and culture. Let's find it from me, from you. So I have some example in Korea. In Korea, in the middle of the Seoul city, we have this statue. He is the, the King Sejong the Great who invented the rain gauge Chigugi 1441. And it's very excellent. It has a three piece, it is made of bronze, made of three piece. And when it rains, we, and this is the stone foundation. We put the rain gauge on top of this stone. And when it rains, it fills and we measure with its ruler. Then the king, king <coughs> made, developed it, and also he sent to the 334 towns to measure it in three shift, and we have the recording. We have recorded since 1770, every day record, a very precise record. So that is our wisdom of my ancestors. Maybe you can find your own wisdom from your ancestors. Okay. So my last word is network. Why we have to do network? So I'm suggesting a platform to network. So this is for platform, platform for young people. So they should respect the rain, rain of the culture and wisdom of each country, and they can share the climate wisdom of each country, and they can do with the discover and make science and art and culture for rainwater. But the very interesting thing is, a very important thing is, it should be fun because it's young people and it should be interesting and peaceful. And I suggest to make a rain schools, which means they teach rain, rainwater and water programs. So I, I'm, asking, I'm suggesting to form BTS group. BTS is famous, 
sinus dancers, but here is B is rain. In Korean language, B is B, B is rain, and teacher and student. So they can gather together and make some, uh, the, some, some uh, creative work. And I am making some contests. I am in contest from through the international student and to make a video and it, it is on the, in the TV channel. Okay, my last message is very simple. Rain is fun. Rain is culture. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Professor Han, for your presentation. He emphasized the importance of targeting young population in rainwater management, and also argued that rainwater management is unique for each country and region, and that it is very important to, uh, through international exchange, um, form a tight-knit network to continue our dialogue in uh, exchanging information about rainwater. So thank you very much. The next presenter is Ms. Michiru Sasagawa from Rain City Support. Please begin when you are ready. Thank you. Okay, thank you for introduction. Um, let me share my screen. Is it okay for Han Sensei? Okay, hello everyone, and it is so my, my, my pleasure to have this opportunity here today. And I'm Michiru Sasagawa, and I'm working at the, as a director at a nonprofit organization called Rain City Support in Japan. And our organization belongs to um, nationwide national wide network named Rainwater Network Japan. So today I'd like to introduce one of our um, members activity from Matsuyama city and it's located westward of Japan. It is students competition about designing and planning, including rainwater harvesting and about 60 students tackle to the various themes every year, every year. And after graduation, most of the students are involved in the design of private housing and office buildings. So I believe this experience keeps them considering the management brain flow in their practical stages. So now let me share the video presentation from the school. Please. Hello everyone, I'm Suzuya Maji from Kawahara Design and Art College. Today, I would like to introduce the rainwater workshop and competition at our school. The school conducts the Manabia project, an industry academia collaboration class, in which students work on a wide range of projects in a political format in competition with companies and organizations. In recent years, floods disasters have been occurring frequently all over the world, causing many damages such as river collapses and landslides. Matsuyama City in Ehime Prefecture has also suffered from frequent water shortages, including an abnormal drought in 1994. In this context, Ms. Okita, the representative of Amamizu Gaksha, proposed a rainwater workshop in 2016. Since then, the rainwater workshop has been held for six years with the competition of Mr. Kamura, an architect and the representative of Atelier Kujira, and Mr. Onishi, of the Association for Rainwater Strength and Infiltration Technology. In 2016, the participants were free to plan the site and contents under the theme of a residence that enjoys and um, utilizes the lane with all five senses. The grand prize winner, Lane Rescue, is a plan that can be moved to a disaster area and collect and use rainwater on site. 
The 2070 initiative was planned for the proposed site around the theme of public buildings that are useful to the community. The grand prize winner, It Rain, was a plan of facility that offered hands-on experience to eat and drink rainwater and solar rainwater interiors that would allow people to welcome it into their home. In 2018, participants actually built a rainwater collection system to enjoy the rain with five senses. They created a panel as the first step in proposing a building that can contribute to the city. The panels are designed to attract viewers with three concepts. For 2019, we went back to the basic and proposed the theme of Rainwater Museum to help people enjoy the rain and learn about the importance of rainwater harvesting. This year, in 2021, the sixth year of the project, the concept of a rain garden on a street corner has been succeeded from 2020. We propose to plan a rain garden using the entire arcade or a space in front of the store where passers-by could feel the joy and elegance of the rain with their five senses. Here is a part of our work. I will explain about Amaniwa Rain Garden, the Garden Prize winner for this year. Amaniwa has three concepts. The first is to use the entire site while making the most of what is culturally good about it. The second is to return rainwater to nature. The third is to return rainwater not only to nature but also to the target site, Hokkaido Main Road. The subject site Hokkaido is a major shopping street in the area. Therefore, while keeping the current arcade intact, we proposed the idea to make it a place of relaxation that is naturally filled with rainwater. At the entrance, there will be rain curtains at both ends to welcome visitors with rainwater. Here is the overall view of the site. If you enter this space, you can hear the sound of the water coming from everywhere. This is the elevation view. This is a cross-sectional view of the first floor, the fantasy zone. There are two tubes ex extending towards the second floor, around which there are photographs and a spiral staircase. You can enjoy the projection mapping while soaking in the footpath and enjoy the floor view while climbing up the spiral staircase. The second floor is planned as a nature park. This is a place to relax and enjoy nature with natural light. A tube extending from the first floor serves as a pathway for rain. One part of the ceiling is open, and when it rains, you can directly feel the rain with your four senses, sight, hearing, smell, and touch. The plaza is a colorful paddle square where you can play freely. When it rains, it falls through the roof and into the tubes of the building. The foreign rainwater falls down the stream to the storage tank. From the storage tank, it returns to the tube of the building and circulates around the site. Rainwater is also circulated to the surrounding stores on the street. A part of the floor is connected to the stores and used rainwater is blind from the stores as well. Rainwater collected on the roof 
of the stores are also utilized and circulated. If we can collect the rainwater falls on the Hokkaido site for six months, we can accumulate about one million liters. So, as another rule for Matsuyama City, we came up with a plan to make the entire facility as a dam in the city. Normally, rainwater is stored in a system through facilities, waterways, and greens, and the storage water is then discharged back into the facilities and the waterways again to make a larger rainwater cycle. The rainwater is also drained from the stores. So, in case of emergency, rainwater stored on a daily basis can be supplied from the system to the waterways and stores. This rainwater circulation system will keep a connection between Hokkaido and paper and straws, and we help build a disaster prevention plan, a sustainable city, and an Hokkaido that cooperates with everyone. In conclusion, the rainwater design project has deepened my interest in rainwater and made me aware of the diversity and the attractiveness of rainwater. I would like to actively participate in work that will benefit from this experience when I enter the workforce. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. It's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The presentation introduced the case on a student competition for designing rainwater harvesting at Matsuyama City in Japan, and also explored how these ideas can be directly incorporated in urban planning. And I think it's a great example of how education, design, and water technology can be combined to promote the sustainable society and environment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Then the next presenter is Dr. Tanuja, Arian Nada from Lanka Rainwater Harvesting Forum. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. And I go on from Sri Lanka. Um, we, uh, Lanka Rainwater Forum is a 25 year old organization. It's a non profit, non governmental organization promoting the concept of rainwater harvesting in Sri Lanka for domestic use mainly. We have, we believe through our promotion, we are targeting our school children. We believe they are the future and they are the most effective people to carry the message of rainwater harvesting for the, and conserving water for the future needs. So in, in our programs, we have water quizzes with them. We have art competition. We have drama uh, competitions. Uh, and also we have introduced weather stations in schools so they can monitor their own rainfall and know about the prediction for the future as well. So the today's video will be uh, um, one of the schools where we have installed a rainwater harvesting system and how they have used to promote water conservation and uh, um, climate change, global warming, all that with the rain system and also how they have with the rainwater system. So please enjoy the video. This is from the children of Sri Lanka. Thank you.
வணக்கம் யூசை நிறுவனத்தின் மூலமாக எமது பாடசாலைக்கு மழைநீர் சேகரிப்பு திட்டத்தின் கீழ் மழைநீர் சாகரி மழைநீர் சேகரிப்பு தாங்கி ஒன்று நிறுவி தரப்பட்டது இதனால் பாடசாலையில் நீண்ட காலமாக நிறுவி வந்த நீர் பற்றாக்குறைக்கு தீர்வு காணக்கூடியதாக அமைந்தது நீர் பற்றாக்குறையினால் எமது பாடசாலை மாணவர்கள் அதிக அசௌகரியங்களுக்கு முகம் கொடுத்தனர் இதனால் இத்தாங்கியினூடாக இப்பிரச்சனைக்கு தீர்வு காண தீர்வு காணக்கூடியதாக அமைந்தது இதனால் பாடசாலை ஆசிரியர்கள் மற்றும் அதிக பாடசாலை மாணவர்கள் அனைவராலும் தாங்கிய எமது நிறு தாங்கிய எமக்கு நிறுவி தன்மைக்காக நன்றியை தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கின்றோம் நன்றி Uh, 30 years we had to suffer a lot, uh, lot of problems for drinking and other, other facilities. So I think after this uh, we got the time, uh, it was a great help to help the students as well as others. So during the COVID season, it helps a lot for the school community. So in future, we have to look after the tank uh, very valuably. So it's very valuable to our school. I uh, finally I thank the Rainwater of the Forum and the USAID uh, organization for giving the great help for our school. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you for the excellent video about the water challenges in Sri Lanka and the examples of how rainwater harvesting can work as key to providing access to safe drinking water in, in the neighborhoods. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so I think we are exactly on time. Um, if anyone in the audience has questions, you can always uh, raise your hand uh, by click clicking on the button or leave a message on the chatting screen and I will collect those and, um, and um, ask the presenters to address those questions. Okay, then the fourth presenter is Professor uh, Viet Tan Nguyen from Hanoi uh, University of Civil Engineering. Thank you, you may begin when you're ready. Thank you. Thank you. Can you see my slides? Okay, good. So after seeing some videos, now I would like to show you uh, some slides with uh, photos uh, to tell you uh, what uh, we did with the rainwater and uh, for the communities and uh, what uh, can we do uh, with the rainwater for the people especially in the vulnerable uh, societies. I will talk about uh, rainwater harvesting uh, models 
uh, and uh, besides uh, rainwater harvesting, uh, what uh, we have to do to improve uh, water and sanitation in general for the people. Uh, we know that in many places we are facing the problem uh, of the water scarcity or water pollution, where we have uh, different pollution sources coming from uh, different activities uh, to pollute uh, groundwater and uh, surface water. And it's not easy to remove uh, contaminants from the water, uh, including uh, heavy metals and uh, organic matters and uh, etc. And even when we have a water supply system and uh, it's uh, in the remote areas, in rural areas, it's not easy to maintain it, to uh, have them uh, functionally, uh, functioning uh, properly. So uh, this is a challenge and um, we have to over, we, we can overcome this challenge by harvesting the rainwater. Uh, it's just, especially in the areas where we have uh, uh, Rainwater harvesting, uh, like a tradition. You see in the photos here, uh, different people in Vietnam, uh, in different places, ethnic, different, uh, even ethnic minorities, they already know how to use rainwater for different uh, activities uh, for many years. So now we have to improve it. We have to continue and let people know the, the better way to handle with the rainwater, to have a better quality and we, we have a longer storage time, etc. Uh, this is one of the systems we, we have done uh, to harvest uh, rainwater, to store it for many months for use, uh, uh, to filter it, to have a better quality, and even we can have the drinkable rainwater uh, adequate with the uh, international and local standards. Uh, and uh, you can do, you cannot distribute uh, rainwater harvesting system for everybody uh, at once. So uh, how to bring it to the community? We have to have some demonstration projects. Uh, and uh, where to start from? Uh, first, we start from the school. Uh, so children will know how to uh, play with the water, how to harvest the rainwater, and then they will tell the family the parents, and they can continue at the families. Uh, this uh, photo showing uh, we have a rainwater harvesting projects in different schools from uh, kindergarten, primary, and secondary schools in uh, different provinces in Vietnam. Uh, and uh, even uh, we have expanded the rainwater harvesting to the temple. Uh, we have a Buddhist temple where uh, people very much often visit, uh, meet the monks, uh, practice, and uh, that is a good place to uh, bring water there, uh, not only for the people, but also to show uh, the good way for water and sanitation and hygiene practicing. And uh, we also uh, developed some uh, rainwater harvesting system for the healthcare facilities in uh, rural areas. Um, and now the WHO has uh, recognized this and uh, they want to uh, expand uh, like a model for uh, other healthcare facilities. So uh, this is a, a fountain where the patient in the healthcare facility can uh, get the uh, drinkable water uh, harvested uh, from the harvested rainwater. Uh, for doing that, we need uh, appropriate uh, treatment technologies, but uh, these technologies are available in the market uh, using uh, membrane filters, and uh, we have uh, uh, UV disinfection, and in some places we can have the remote control uh, via SIM card or via Wi-Fi to uh, send the signals to the control room or to us so that we could know uh, the system is working or not. And um, we install this uh, red and uh, green uh, light here. So if the green 
light. It shows uh, the system is working. Uh, UV lamp uh, is on. So uh, water is uh, drinkable. When it's uh, turned to the red, uh, it's uh, a sign to let people do not drink, just use for domestic purposes. And uh, with uh, Hanoi Civil Engineering University and Seoul National University students, we uh, installed some demonstration systems for the low income uh, families uh, in uh, rural areas in Vietnam so that people would uh, look at each other and uh, repeat uh, and multiply the model. Uh, and uh, water supply is not enough to uh, improve the life of the people. We have to think of the sanitation. This is a well-known F diagram where you see we have to have adequate uh, water supply and hygienic toilet and also hygienic behaviors uh, to have a triangle uh, together uh, in order to have uh, improved uh, water and sanitation and hygiene uh, and to break, uh, protect health for the people. So uh, we have introduced some uh, hygienic latrines in different areas uh, together with the water supply. We have a dry sanitation and wet sanitation uh, very much depends on the choose on the choice of the people. And um, water supply and sanitation are even not enough. Uh, in order to uh, maintain the system, uh, to uh, bring people to participate, uh, we, we, we have to have uh, adequate behavior change uh, so that people could uh, join your activities and without you, the, the people could continue and uh, disseminate and extend the model. So uh, the third component important for the community is uh, behavior chain communications. So starting from the schools, uh, this uh, good knowledge information could shared to the families. Uh, in the schools, the main players are teachers and uh, students. So uh, together with the teachers in the classes, uh, we did a lot of uh, information behavior change communication campaigns and um, a lot of uh, competitions, parties, festivals have been organized. Uh, temples is another place, as I mentioned, to uh, disseminate information of a behavior change. Uh, so for the, uh, with the monks and the summer school kids who go to the temples uh, for practicing in the summer, in the vacation, we share the knowledge of the good uh, water and sanitation in, and hygiene practices. Uh, healthcare facility is a good place to disseminate information as uh, I mentioned. So finally, uh, from the a triangle, uh, clean water supply, hygiene behavior change and hygienic sanitation, uh, we, we could bring the better life uh, to protect health and environment. Uh, and starting from the demonstration activities, and the good communication, we can bring the good practices and model to the families and communities. And uh, the, the key thing here is the participation of the people. Uh, so the commitment of the people, uh, leaders, uh, would uh, bring the success of the uh, system and uh, operation and maintenance is important for the system sustainability. Uh, I have the, uh, YouTube video, if you type a story of rain community, uh, you can find uh, that uh, video. Uh, and we would like very much uh, to say thank you to the uh, donors like Koika, Mini Shop Science and ICT of Korea, uh, University of uh, Civil Engineering in Hanoi and uh, National University in Seoul. We have a Wasat Center together with Professor Moong Han and other colleagues. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor Nguyen, for your excellent presentation. Oh, it provided a very technical and engineering perspective um, concerning rainwater har harvesting. Uh, many photos illustrated how rainwater harvesting 
um, technology is used in Vietnam. And I expect that there are many important implications for rural areas, especially for rural areas that are experiencing limitations in the water supply system. And you also mentioned a very important approach in involving the community in terms of um, using this type of technology. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so our fifth presenter is, um, uh, for our fifth presentation, we will, uh, we will continue by showing a video. There will be no introduction. Um, the video is presented by Theater Group Hae in South Korea, and the presentation is prepared by Ms. Hyun Jung Kim. Hello, this is Hyun Jung Kim, a president of Space for Theatre of the Oppressed. He, which is one of Korean MPO based in Seoul, South Korea. He has a focus on solving various social issues such as human rights, women, violence, environment, immigrants, underprivileged, and career paths based on the wars method, theory of the oppressed. Environment is the most interesting issue for him. Zero project of environmental issue are Come Back Kihu and Help Be Rain. Help Be Rain is my main topic today here in SIWI. It deals with water problem, especially rain water. B is a Korean name for rain. So the title of B Rain means Rainy use for bee. The story of a bee rain is a fantastic adventure of a teenager hero for the rainy city bee rain to save. It contains drama, imagery, dance, songs, games, and keys. What to try to tell through bee rain? Rainy application of rain water can help water problem and climate crisis. Since 2018, thousands of youth in South Korea who enjoyed hot beer rain have been changed their awareness and uh, interesting about rain. How? More positive, more active, more brainy. This result gives us big joy and worth. By this, I could find theater could be helpful for improvement for water problem and effective for youth. Theater has positive power to change, to make solidarity. This is the reason why to continue this project till now. This year, 2021, we would like to begin a project to build a collaborative network with global youth through WAY project.
My theater group here has selected for private public diplomacy support project to revitalize public diplomacy in the field of global environment issue 2021. And I'm looking for partners to proceed with a way project. This project aims to arouse interest and problem awareness of youth about water, which is directly related to our life in the current global climate crisis, and to provide a way to collectively improve water environment through theater activities. Please pay attention to Way Project and I would like to invite you. Join us if you want in your own way in my Way Project. Let's challenge it together for water environment for our today and tomorrow. Thanks a lot for inviting me. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you for the uh, presentation. Um, it was about Theater Group K, which is a nonprofit organization that uses its uh, artistic performances to promote um, environmental education. So, our, lastly, we will hear from Ms. Terim Yoon representing uh, Quest. Presco at Seoul National University. Oh, hello. Hello, I'm Terim from Seoul National University. Uh, I'm greeting, greeting from Seoul. Today, I would like to talk about the ill literacy. Uh, the video that I will show you contains my and our environmental club voices for water and climate crisis. Please enjoy it. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Chenin from Seoul National University. I am the leader of SNU Environmental Club, CR. Uh, to briefly introduce what our club does in CR, we endlessly find and study the environmental issues that threaten our Earth. And we act to encourage the sustainable campus life to fight the climate crisis. Today, I would like to talk about water. Water is essential for our living, but we don't know much about water. Do you know how the tap water becomes available for us? What about the treatment of fresh water that we drink every day? How much volume of water is used to make a hamburger? Yes, most of us are in ill literacy. Throughout the video, I would like to talk about the ill literacy. Literacy is the combination of water and literacy. Illiteracy indicates a person who cannot read and write a statement on his life. Similarly, ill literacy indicates a person who don't have a decent understanding of water. Therefore, the ill literacy is escaping from ill literacy so that have a good understanding of water and its high value. Now, I am going to lead you to the world of the ill literacy. Because I believe that water has high value and effectively utilizing it can bring positive changes in our life and even to our entire Earth. Seoul National University, Kwana Campus, is built on the middle of the mountain and it blocked the waterway from mountain to the village, which destroyed the ecosystem and polluted the water. 
He's made me wonder how the water flows on campus. Then I got the chance to visit Professor Han, and I found out that various water-related problems could be solved by utilizing rainwater. Professor Han introduced me the rooftop garden that holds the rainwater. This rainwater lowered the temperature of the entire building, so it is cool in summer and warm in winter. Moreover, rainwater prevented the fluid damage and can be reused for flushing toilet and mopping. SNU campus used about 2.3 million tons of water in 2020, which is an excessively high usage compared to other institutions. However, we found a way to use rainwater to save the water. To introduce this idea to our fellow students, we spread the following reflective word poster where we reflected our indifference to water. Our reflective statement asked the university to effectively manage leaking water, fully utilize rain harvesting system, and recycle laboratory coolant. We believed that continued interest can solve the problem. We are not only the students who passively listen to lectures on campus, but also the actors who must act to contribute to create an eco-friendly and egalitarian campus. These reflective statements were attached all over the school and we got students' consent to get the support. We are planning to meet the president of SNU to spread our voices. After that, we will keep continue to think, discuss, and act on what we can do as students. Water is an essential resource. The United Nations stated that 60 liters of water per person per day is a human right. The world is discussing about carbon neutrality as a solution to fight climate crisis. But achieving carbon neutrality involves either the collapse of existing economic system or a shift to a completely different economic paradigm, both of which are challenging. At the moment, I learned the use of rainwater can be an alternative to carbon neutrality to a certain extent. To utilize rainwater to fight climate crisis, we need to know about the water. That's why the ill literacy is important. The way to the ill literacy isn't hard. First, record how much water you use every day. Second, figure out how much water is used on your consumed goods and foods. Third, collect the rainwater and make use of it. These three steps will lead you to the ill literacy. The current 20s are generation who can't avoid climate crisis. So we are the generation who needs to solve this problem. That's why it's important for our generation to keep an interest. Climate crisis is frustrating because nobody knows what it will bring to our Earth. We will definitely regret in the future if we don't act now. Our generations must unite to respond to this crisis. We already have reached a situation where simple interest alone can't solve the problem. But at the same time, no action can be followed without interest. At last, I hope you carefully listen to the voices of those who are putting efforts to protect our Earth. Don't let them fight alone. Thank you. <coughs> Hmm. Hello everyone, I'm Chenin from Seoul National University. Oh, Illiteracy indicates a person who cannot read and write a statement in, in 
<coughs> on his everyday life. Thank you very much, Ms. Teddy Nguyen. Um, she provided a student activist perspective on the importance of understanding the urgency of the current environmental crisis and also how to become the illiteracy in our everyday lives. Thank you. So as you can see from this session, rainwater harvesting is not limited to just one country or just one profession. We were able to see how the academia, non-private organization, and students from um, various parts of the world are working together to overcome issues of today's environmental crisis through rainwater harvesting. And so to summarize the uh, six presentations, I find the common theme as the following. First is to act locally to find the rainwater management skills that works best in their own community, but connect globally through a tight network to learn from each other. And also start early in educating and actively engaging young people in rainwater management, as they will become future leaders who are responsible for sustaining this rainwater paradigm for a long time. Finally, I believe this seminar sets a solid ground in building the International Youth Rainwater Network and facilitating many collaborations to come in the future. So thank you very much. Uh, we are slightly over time. Um, Dr. Arianda uh, provided uh, a web, web link of her organization. But if you're interested, I think you can also Google um, the presenters uh, for today and their um, affiliations as well. So thank you very much, all six presenters. Uh, so I think we can end today's session. Unfortunately, we don't have time for questions, um, but I'm sure everyone here um, are, will, will be welcoming emails um, if you have further questions. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you Professor. <laughs> professor thank you, Vienna. Professor Hang. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to retire in three, three days. So, by, <laughs> so retire by SNU, but I'm going to work more to closely with you in the future, so. I'm still active, although I'm retired at the age of 65. <laughs> so I have more chance to talk with you and work with you. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so thank so you, my, my student, Cherim and, and Hyunso did a very good job. Thank you very much for the, the nice steps. And Professor Han Yunzhan, and thank you, everybody. So we have mm. to close it. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you so much, Han Sensei, for today's Thank opportunity. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, bye bye. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank nice you to see everybody. Mm -hmm. Very nice to see you, Ariana Anderson. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes.